any questions or comments? this game one more time somewhere in there all of this <clears throat> there is still an awareness function that <clears throat> is aware of being an individual expression of life in a very deep hypnotic trance Get this other function of the <coughs> self that gets to listen to all the suggestions from the various not eyes. That's the endless conversation in the head. Every sentence of which either starts with I or is about I. Got to figure out what to do to tell us. I to tell X to get something done. If, if you've questioned this a little bit, whether or not this really is what life is about, <coughs> being happy is a part of life. No big deal to continue maybe working at being happy. Although the method, <clears throat> the way of going about it is about as screwy as anything that a human being <coughs> could conceive. And it really is doomed to failure, the particular way that one goes about being happy. Is <clears throat> <So> it basically <coughs> says you're happy when you get a thing. Isn't that right? Happiness comes from getting things. Either you get the right lover so that they can make you happy, or you get the right job or the right whatever it is. You find the right activity that produces happiness for you. And it's all about getting things. <laughs> we seem to forget this very fundamental idea that I heard expressed one time as if you live to get, you will live in lack. If you can be happy living in the midst of lack, I will be very surprised especially when you've decided that it's <clears throat> things that should give you happiness and what you're living in is all that you don't have. It's just not going to work. You cannot <clears throat> produce <coughs> happiness from the environment. And then this poor little self develops this tremendous craving for power, <coughs> the power to control things, which includes others, doesn't it? <coughs> so that I will get the happiness I'm searching for. Okay, fine. That, this is a part of life. The pursuit and maybe even accomplishment of happiness is a part of life. There's nothing wrong with it. <clears throat> Unless you make it the whole of life. It is an aspect of living. And the amusing thing is that if you make it an aspect of living instead of the whole, it's quite easy to accomplish. Because you get that it isn't based on things and you start producing it yourself. 
The interesting thing is that you feel picked on if you have to do it yourself. <coughs> it should have been given to me. Why should I have to do it? You're willing to, maybe, to do things that will make the things that get, but you expect the thing to give you the happiness, period. So you go and get the right job, and then if six months later you're not happy in it, then it's the job's fault. <coughs> you see, I did my part. I found the right career. I did this, I did that, and now it isn't making me happy. <coughs> if someone were to come along and say, well, why don't you produce a little joy at work instead of expecting it to make you <coughs> joyful, you get kind of resentful, huh? Why should I have to do that? I don't know, because that's the way it works. For a little while, the job did it for you, you see. <coughs> you just went there, and, and joy just happened. You were pleased as punch to be there, and then after a while, that wore off, as all things do. That's the problem with things. It's part of why you always live in lack, you see. Anything that works, we get used to it after a while, and it sort of stops working as well. And then you, you got to put a little joy into it. Except this side jumps up and says, wait a minute, I, I have a right for it to come from the thing. I don't want to do that. It really isn't <coughs> that tough a job if you get a different idea. Okay, this idea is that I get happiness from something. And the other idea says you live in what you radiate, which is true of any radiating body. Those of us who talk about this idea always love to use the example of the sun because it's the greatest radiating body in our experience, isn't it? <coughs> it is a heck of an example. The sun lives in the midst of mainly <coughs> nothing, with a few little bodies around it, huh? But mainly nothing. And it radiates forth energy, doesn't it? Do you know that famous Sufi couplet? In all of history, the sun is never said to the earth. It would be a very amusing thing if it ever did, wouldn't it? I wonder what we'd pay. <laughs> what could we possibly pay in, in <coughs> to pay back that which has made life possible in here? The second line is, a love like that lights up the whole sky. But for the sake of this little discussion, Let's stop being the benefactors and let's be the benefactee. So this is where the sun lives, in an immense emptiness, primarily, with a few little things here and there, huh? <clears throat> For whatever reason, it pours forth this energy, with most of which we perceive as heat and light. So what does the sun actually live in? Its own light. Isn't that right? We happen to also be the benefactors of the fact that the sun just feels like sitting there and pouring forth energy. Without it, life would not be possible here. Every bit of energy on the physical level that you see is transformed sunlight, almost. Most of the energy that makes life possible certainly is. <clears throat> and, you know, the sun doesn't ask for nothing back because it ain't doing it for us, duh. We, we are just innocent bystanders who happen to benefit. And why would it ever ask for anything back? It didn't do it for us, it did it for itself, most likely. It said, you know, I'm bored with darkness. I'm bored with empty space. I don't want to live in darkness and empty space. I'm going to pour out energy and light. Hey, look, neighbors, where'd they come from? <laughs> <coughs> you 
And that's the alternate idea that <coughs> this will just never see. Or if it does see it, it just so it gets in love with the idea and quotes it as an authority. But it doesn't see any point in living it. If you understand that concept, happiness is not particularly difficult to produce or whatever you want to call it. Radiate it. It'll be what you live in. It's, it's an aspect of life. <clears throat> no one said don't do it. But if you ever get to the point where you just don't feel like that's enough, that somehow one has missed the mark by thinking that was the whole thing. And there's something else to do. It, it, it's, it's fine for what it is. But when it's made the whole life, it's clearly missing something. That's what you said earlier at the table. If you think about it, that's just exactly what you said at the table. And that you can do it. <clears throat> you can do all those pursuits and so on, but somehow they're, they're missing something when you're not adding some other element to it, huh? If you ever get to that point where that's true for you, that's the way you perceive things, <clears throat> and there is a way to change one's condition so that this real I, this awareness of life, life's expression as an individual, <clears throat> can are you really coming to this thing? Oh, okay, good. <laughs> <clears throat> can get out of this horrible state that it's in of being deeply lost in a trance, not consciously aware of itself as life's expression. And that's what <coughs> we talk about. Apparently that longing or need to do that is not very powerful in most people. So they get started and they never quite finish the job. <coughs> the first thing that I must do is to clean up this mess. This is my home. This is where I live. It is a mess. I, I, gotta, I gotta take care of the mess. But please make that be the first thing you do and not the only thing you do, okay? Yeah, you, you, you gotta go. As they used to say in the old days, weed the garden, that's fine. There's some neat stuff that could grow in there that's being choked out by the weeds. That's fine. It's a necessary part of things, but it's not the whole of it. <clears throat> that's done by setting up what we call an observing eye that begins to check out what's happened. The picture of man is a, a kind of very undetailed map, a guide, to see what's happened. So you can start identifying the weeds. Uh, you, you do some work at, at getting that set up so there becomes something in self that is always watching, not eyes, at work. And a recommendation is that you use this map <clears throat> as a guide to try and identify them because they look very complicated and complex and so on and so on and so on. And try and simplify it and see if you can identify it. And all that stuff that goes through the head 
one of these six knot eyes at work, or families of knot eyes. So you can kind of make some sense out of the whole thing. And also see, this really is a knee. It's just the same six decisions over and over and over and over and over again in a way that looks outrageously complicated and like it's much more than that and it is not. There, are, uh, there is a few other things in the self besides the not eyes. And most of that is technical training. The ability to drive a car. <clears throat> Mark's ability to play with those cameras and make them do what they're supposed to do. You see, stuff like that. That's also in there. I wouldn't weed that part out. <laughs> that's, that's why we don't talk about it too much. That seems to be okay. That's pretty healthy and life-giving. We all need that sort of stuff. You can kind of just let it sit there and maybe even encourage it a bit, huh? These are weeds. They're just choking everything else out. They, they really need to be <coughs> dug up. <coughs> uh, if I can get a pretty good state of ongoing watching of all the stuff that's going through here, all the thoughts and feelings, and see how they all come from one of these six things, in one way or another, <coughs> Then I can maybe get this observer to also start repeating that endlessly as a litany, this isn't me, this isn't me, this isn't me, this isn't me, in the hopes that one day <clears throat> that I will get enough energy, because that's the biggest problem in here, you see. They're getting all the energy, because you think that is you. And the eye just doesn't have much to do anything. And maybe if you, if you quiet it down just a little bit, <clears throat> or even if you can't quiet it down, you just start feeding it constantly by saying yes to all of it and start disidentifying and so on, the eye will get enough of life's energy to wake up and, sit and look around and realize it's still there. <coughs> I can start some of the <coughs> other cleaning of the thing that we talked about yesterday, okay? There are some other cleanup jobs to do, aren't there? And it could even begin the process of making sense out of the world that it's in, which you just cannot do while you're identified with the self. Everything, as I kind of pointed out over this weekend, has to be distorted to fit some existing picture of reality that you've got. And you can maybe start using the teaching <clears throat> to investigate some other things, even the world around you and your environment and so on. That's fine. Maybe one day, this awareness function of life that knows that it is an individual can start having a good time with life and play with that expression a bit. Stop letting it just be an expression of the same all six not eyes and some new combination you got. You didn't even come up with it. It just sort of happened by chance, didn't it? Based on the events of your life. <clears throat> to be blunt, this may be to something more that makes life more than just a pursuit of happiness and building great things and uh, that, that gets kind of empty at a certain point. Why wouldn't it be empty? It's missing life. And the other thing I, I seem to have been at great pains to point out throughout this weekend is that the lower things, when you don't add something higher to it, 
are empty, meaningless, yada yada. <clears throat> but you add something higher to it and it, it transforms and the whole thing changes. Even the lower part becomes higher. And in a human being, this is the missing part, is that conscious relationship with a much higher form of life than we're used to dealing with, a part of the Creator that is here within this game with me. And that's what we're missing. And you can play the pursuit of happiness game and maybe actually enjoy it. And not feel like it ought to be given to you. And not feel resentful of the fact <laughs> you do it by pouring it out of you instead of sucking it in. So if we kept the. I burst your eardrum? Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of, uh, you know, I mean, we got this analogy of the sun, and then, of course, there's the nice black holes, huh? but I, I like a, a, another analogy better on this one. It's called out of the empire. That's basically what we are, folks. We're vampires. We run around sucking it out of every, everybody else. You make the blood, I don't feel like it. I'll just suck it out of you. <laughs> that's that's a rough map. We've talked about lots and lots of details over the years. <coughs> but uh, that's that's the rough map. Any questions or comments? Okay. What is your concept of God? I have no clue. You have no clue. I really don't. When you speak of going to a higher level, higher consciousness. Even even that, what I know of it, is such a pittance compared to all there is to be <laughs> to know that. Truth is, I don't even know if I know much about that. But God, I don't know. All I really know is the minor little experience I've had with the part that I can deal with, okay? But I don't really have a conception of the whole. I think it's probably beyond anything I can possibly conceive. And I'm okay with that. Um, if you want to ask maybe a particular question, I might be able to deal with it. But to tell you what the whole thing is, I'm sorry, I just can't do it. No, I don't understand. What about addiction? When people become addicted. Yeah, I, I know what addiction is. I've had a couple myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, generally speaking, addictions come about when one is resisting some experience, okay? Some, something in life you just don't like and you fight against it. And pretty soon you get obsessed with the whole thing and then you find out that <clears throat> some substance of some kind or some activity, because it isn't always a substance, but it really is, because activities then produce internal chemicals, okay? Um, let you forget about it for a few moments and get some peace. And since you won't stop resisting whatever that part of life is that you can't deal with or won't deal with, I really should say, you feel you can, you end up addicted to that substance that lets you forget for a moment. And then the great joke is, like I said, anything after you use it for too long, 
doesn't have a very good effect anymore. <laughs> so now, now you're stuck with this taking this substance in, but it don't really quite work anymore, and now you're really in trouble, aren't you? But that's that's the gist of it. That's, is resisting an aspect of life that you find unpleasant and have trouble dealing with to the point that it becomes an obsession. Anything that you resist strongly, you become obsessed with. And you keep that up, and then you'll probably run into one of those various substances that let you forget the whole thing after a while, now you're addicted. <clears throat> you can end the whole thing if you'll deal with the part of life that you found unacceptable or impossible to deal with and just say, no, okay, I, I guess I can deal with that. It's not that big a deal. Sadly, I've noticed that a lot of the chemical uh, addictions tend to come from an obsession with not liking self and hating oneself. And, um, How do you learn to love yourself? Love God first. <laughs> <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but that's my recommendation. Love God? Uh -huh. So, God is... Well, it, like I said, I have no definition right. for that term. But God is higher level of thinking than in the I, I try Well, to certainly one, one thing we can say while well, begging the question is it's whatever created all of this. Okay, I, I can't really say what created all of this, but, but I can see that there is a creator. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And so you notice that even in, well, not even in, but in the most successful of our methods of dealing with addiction, um, that's what you see very strongly, isn't it? There is a higher power. Start working with it. You need the help. You need the assistance from that. And I feel the same way about, about love when you don't you don't like yourself, start working with a higher being. I love that being. And I think you'll find it much easier to love yourself simply because you might notice if you got involved with that being, that whether you like it or not, <coughs> that being loves you. Absolutely, no matter what you do, without any conditions or qualifications at all. And that's our problem, is we can't do that. We have trouble saying, but I, I can't be loved if I do this. And that higher being just doesn't seem to feel that way. It's, even if it would prefer that you didn't do that, it'll still love you if you do it. I recommended a book to folks <coughs> read on the plane over here. It's an old, old book. It's just the first time I read it called The Great Divorce. And there is one scene in there where somebody gets very upset because a fellow who used to work for them was got in heaven before them and they were a murderer. Like, I was devout. How could you be here before me when you murdered? Like, well, you were wrong about God, weren't you? <laughs> he suggested that we not murder each other for pretty good reason, I think. But he didn't say, I won't love you if you make a boo-boo. <laughs> this, is, this is a man who is considered to be one of the greatest mouthpieces or something, spokesman for Christianity. C.S. Lewis, he's kind of, I'm sure a lot of people would say, he's, but nonetheless that is true, and, and this is his point of view. 
because he is one of those few Christians, I think, who actually had a little bit to do with God. And he found that out. Yeah, it really is that unconditional. That's the problem, see, with our love. It's, it's so conditional. And <clears throat> I've done that. I've done personally a lot of things that I think would probably be hard for about anyone to love, okay? They certainly were for me. But they weren't for a higher being. And I know in this particular case that's where the ability to love self came from was just constantly being reminded that he loved me whatever I did. He, it, she, whatever, okay. And I, I got tired of kicking and screaming and fighting and saying, no, I'm right, I'm unlovable. <laughs> I just got wore out after a while and said, okay, okay, okay. I give in. You're right. <laughs> I've had some people argue with me on that one. They claim that you have to love self before you can love God, but I just don't buy it. I think if you try to do it that way around, you'll probably never never get to loving God at all. <coughs> By the time you're through, if you manage to succeed at loving self, you'll probably be so self-involved that <laughs> you won't think of God again. <laughs> Unfortunately, we do tend to turn to that higher aspect of life when we feel helpless, don't we? When we're kind of like doing okay, we forget all about it. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments? <coughs> I thought you had one, yeah. In that book, um, there's a scene where... What book? The Great Divorce. Ah, you've read it. It's one of my favorites. Um, there's a scene where the man has a, a tempter, a little demon sort of. And he's confront an angel is confronting him. I remember, yeah. He's telling him to give it up, and when he he can't. He's one of the few who gets in, as I recall. Yeah, he can't give it up himself. He has to. He can't. There's nothing he can do. Right. He has to ask for help. Right. When he does, the same thing that was his demon is transformed. So I I remember the story. What's yeah. what's the point? What I was going to ask you is earlier you said um, that number five. I must be different. I'm a mess. Mm -hmm. And then later, you said, to in weeding the garden, realizing that you're a mess. So in the idea that Lewis, it's yeah. Except that there, it may sound like the same words, but it's not the same thing. I was wondering if you meant in the same way, using that function the same no. way. Okay. No, it's useless. <clears throat> because of the way that the non-eyes can do things, okay? I can weed in the garden. They cannot. They can only add new things. They cannot remove anything, as you well know. I'll move back, okay? Um, I can only add new behaviors, but I never managed to actually get rid of the old one. That's the big problem with behavior crap. So I'll go out and I'll work really hard and I'll, and I'll finally get a new way of acting. But the old one keeps popping back up all the time. It didn't really go away. I just sort of diminish it and, and strengthen another. You get what I'm saying? They cannot take anything out because the, they actually can't put anything in. Only X does that. <coughs> X made all these not eyes at the request of the real eye. And only X can remove them. So they can't help. They'll just try and get you to act different, and that's it. They can't actually get you to do anything useful, okay? They'll, they'll get you to add some new behavior, but that's all. I need to clean the mess up. And the only way I can do that <coughs> is to say to X, who made it in the first place, you know, when I asked you to remember that complaining gets me my way, I was wrong. It doesn't. It's a lie. In fact, it's just kind of an obnoxious way to act. 
walking around whining about how terrible everything is. And I don't want to do it anymore. The next can get rid of the complainer, not me. Or not five, or not any of the rest of them, but X can, because it knows how it made them in the first place, and it can unmake them. So that, that's the <coughs> <day. coughs> The, the not eyes can help in the observation. They can help in the sort of practice of saying, this isn't I, this isn't me, over and over and over again. But I doubt if they'll ever get to the point only the real I can look at this whole thing and say, this is a lie. And, and that's what it takes to weed the garden, okay? You've got to look at that plan that you always thought was the most useful, beautiful, wonderful thing that ever was and say, what a weed. It's a piece of junk. Get it out of here. And that's how we see it. We treasure five. We hate five at the same time. We hate the constant harping about what's wrong with me. That part of five we hate, huh? The endless litany of you did this and you did that and it's wrong and then and then and then and you think these thoughts and you, and you don't really want to do this and then, okay. But we also treasure its ability to, to get me to act different. I need that. How can I possibly get through life if I can't, if I can't behave differently? <clears throat> Those who are strong on the other side, they love sticking up for rights. That's their great treasure. It's what gives them all their power in life. It's the awareness that's got to see the illusion in these so-called abilities and see the contradiction in the belief that they, they really are effective and call them what they are, we. And say, so pull it out. Which, in, real, in reality, is to just tell Alex, I made a boo-boo. I lied to you. <laughs> I told you years ago that complaining would make the world a better place and then I'd be happy in it. And boy, am I wrong. All of a sudden it's making me miserable because it constantly shows me what's wrong with everything and I'm tired of it. It's an illusion. It didn't <coughs> help. It made things worse. And that's the weeding process, to see the illusion and what I've always believed look at it a little bit better so I see the whole thing instead of just the little piece that makes it appear to work, okay? Make sense? Any other questions or comments? X is first force. Yep. Yeah, human being I am. <laughs> the awareness function. What's three? Huh? What's three? What is the third force in terms of the idea of it, David? Form. What's the form in a human being? Is it this thing that I wave around? <laughs> what's the result? <laughs> Endless questions that don't matter. <laughs> Behavior, function, expression, this one. It's all the things that I do. First force seems to be that for some unknown reason, life wants to express itself, and what do you know? That is the result. Whether it be done consciously or unconsciously, it is done. <clears throat> Life wants to express itself quite clearly. It's so enthusiastic about the idea that it does it all over the place, huh? There's a human being, there's a bunch of plants out there, there's little creepy crawlies and big flying things. It's just got this 
kick about self-expression. I just don't understand how awareness is resistance to X. Then you have not studied the four forces. Just I'm weak on the forces. I can see that. So as a result, you're stuck with ideas instead of experience. <coughs> Resistance is not bad. That, that is the world's concept of it. It is not a bad thing. It's just resistance. And it is absolutely required as part of all things. There's nothing bad about it. And there are lots of ways to resist something. You do not have to resist something by beating, beating it up and using violence and force. I can resist you just by standing here, can't I? If you want to, if I'm in a narrow enough doorway and you want to get through it, I can resist you simply by passively standing there and refusing to move, huh? Not to do anything. <coughs> when you use a mold to make something, the mold doesn't fight the substance that goes into it, and it's absolutely essential that it resists its flow into a shape. Is that right? Yeah, I got you. Now. That's a good question. You're only thinking as though resistance is active resistance, yeah, and forgetting there's passive resistance as well. And, the, and that is the point that has been made many times here. <clears throat> you have a distorted form and result because you are active resistance to X. You say to X, whatever you want to do, I will not do it. And all those things you don't want to do, I'm going to do them. So you're active resistance <coughs> to what life's initiative. You don't have to be. You could make that most powerful of statements that was given to us 2,000 years ago and say, thy will be done. And then I am no longer active resistance. I am passive resistance. I resist only because I am here by my presence rather than because I'm fighting you every step of the way. That is an entirely different form that comes from the change in that resistance. And I suspect we will see a very different fourth force of result or expression. We might actually see an expression of life rather than expression of violence, hatred, and death. Interesting, but it is very easy to say, <clears throat> Thy will be done to someone who loves completely. Do you honestly believe they're going to forget you when they do their will? That you won't be taken into account? Come on. But I understand why folks believe that, because I've heard that from a couple ladies who've been conditioned with the old form of, of marriage that basically says the man is the head of the household and you do whatever they damn well please, period. You mean nothing. And I've heard that from a few ladies. Like, why would I want to do that? That would be horrible. Yeah, if he doesn't love you, I suppose you're right. On the other hand, if he does, maybe he'd sort of like think about you on occasion and whatever you did together might be your idea too because he'd actually listen. Uh, in the absence of love, saying thy will be done it would be a great torment, I suspect, and I can understand why you all don't want to do it except you don't know who you're saying it to quite clearly. You, you never met him. I don't think for a second he would forget me. <laughs> do 
is, it's pretty easy to say thy will be done to someone who loves completely. I don't lose nothing. That's, that is a possibility. Uh, you don't have to do that. There's no, there's no dogma rules uh, here. That's just not the point. But that is a possibility if one really wants to take this to an interesting realm of things. <coughs> um, that is a possibility one could do to actually make that great statement. I will be done and be passive resistance to life's initiative and see where the game goes. Teaching is like anything else. You can take it as far as you like. You know. I've known some people who were just <laughs> delighted when they learned how to play Mary Had a Little Lamb on a musical instrument, okay? They just thought that was the neatest thing. What's wrong with that? I often wonder, do they get any less joy out of their delight with Mary Had a Little Lamb than somebody does with Rachmaninoff's third? I don't know. <coughs> But you can take it as far as you want, you like, huh? It's probably just about as delightful every step of the way. So, doesn't really, no rules, no dogma, no shoulds or ought tos, but that is a possibility. Any other questions or comments? Steam now. As far as introducing anything new, I really can't anyway. I'm just about done. So. <coughs> if there's nothing else, we'll just end it. In some things it is, and in some things it is not. Uh, it doesn't work that way. You, you always have to look <coughs> at the core forces that it's involved in, okay? To, because there, there's no absolute like that. Uh, gravity could be first force for all I know in something else, and it's certainly third force in another set of relationships. Go every which way. Yeah, yeah. You have to, you have to look at the particular completed phenomenon that you're talking about to see what the, what the forces are. And uh, honestly, I mean, the same object can be a different force in a different game. <coughs> like your guitar is a completed phenomenon. It's got all four forces in it, and yet. It's an entirely different force when you pick it up to play it. 
And then when you just set it aside and it just sits there, it's an entirely different force now. So it changes constantly as far as what force it is. Because <laughs> it depends on what's, what the phenomenon is that it's involved with. Yes? Another question is, is, is presence passive resistance or is receptivity passive resistance? But I think it's... Presence. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not getting it. Say it uh, one more time. Uh, my question was, is presence passive resistance or is receptivity passive resistance? But I think it may be the same answer. Yeah, those are, those are sort of functions. Since presence is a byproduct of something. So it's, uh, <coughs> um, you know, it's, it's something that sort of made manifest as a byproduct, something else, like the guitar's presence is the fact that it has a material form. Huh? A human being's presence <coughs> is a byproduct of how much energy they're dealing with and how they deal with that energy. Um, so that that can then become perhaps part of four forces. Like if you need human presence, and that's going to be part of the part of the form, isn't it? If you're a performer or something, or a preacher or a speaker or something, then you need a certain amount of presence just to get the job done and. And that thing that's a byproduct, something else over in, in this little game when you're playing it becomes part of the form in the way that it makes the expression even the result even possible. So yeah, it's it's very you just can't can't do that. Just look at the thing and say which force is, is that. You have, you have to look at what the whole what you're talking about. <coughs> Any other questions or comments? Um, can diet be changed to increase the energy level? <laughs> <coughs> you know the answer to that question, don't you? I mean, that's, a, that's kind of a pretty obvious secular question. <coughs> of course it can. In any permanent way, because every time I've tried, I it works for just a, a permanent way. way. <laughs> no, I don't think there's anything about diet that's permanent. It's something you've got to do repeatedly for the rest of your life. How could you have a permanent <clears throat> way? I don't, that doesn't make sense. I've got to eat, and I've got to eat, and I've got to eat again. I don't eat once permanently. <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is <laughs> doing the work will change your energy level. No, you said diet. Uh, yes, but I'm saying, can, can diet be part of doing the work at all, or is it, or, or not? I don't know if it's part of doing the work necessarily. Uh, <coughs> it's part of maintaining the body. Perhaps the reason why you're having problems is because <coughs> you're making the same mistake the authorities make. You, you want one simple answer that you can just do and do and do and do and do and do and do. And you don't want to take into account the fact that life changes and the diet that is proper for yesterday may not be right for today and you've got to pay some attention. That's the way it goes. That's what authorities want to do. But, but even they have to say, you know, <laughs> they can't like tell you to eat the same thing every day. They have to give you groups of things to eat and you're picking it because you, can, you can't you just can't do that just can't do that but you'd, uh, you'd see a, a much greater change in energy level if you would get out of here mm -hmm. Duh. and much of your difficulties with the body are because you're living in fear including the increased weight that you've been putting on recently. Yeah, using the food as anesthetic. Uh, I mean, by all means,
worse. <laughs> Eat properly. It would be nice to stop being afraid. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments? Unfortunately, you value the fear because you don't call it fear. You call it being wise and smart and prudent. So you sit around constantly imagining all the terrible things can, that can happen later so you can prevent them. And you think you're being smart. But that's just fear. That's all, that's all fear is. It's just sitting and imagining future catastrophes as if they were real. So you don't you don't call it fear, you call it smart. <laughs> say say what? Right on. Okay. Any other questions or comments? That's enough for one weekend. Driving or are you fuller or what? 